everyone, in this video we are going to discuss the topic reproduction in chlorine plants from the chapter how do organisms reproduce from class 10. So student, chlorine plants are one of the major group of the kingdom plantae. They also belong to the division angiosperm. So in a plant, the flowers that they bear are actually the organ of reproduction or the reproductive unit that produces the gamete. It means it involves sexual reproduction if we talk about gametes, right? So, uh, but for us, a flower fascinate us in many different ways. We are very fascinated about its very beautiful and attractive color and also due to its fragrance, etc. But for the plant, they have only one purpose that is for reproduction. Here, let us see the various parts of a flower which are the calyx, corolla, endosium, and gynosium. They are also known as the sepals, petals, stamen, and pistil. So in the diagram, let me show you. The leaf-like structure, which is mostly green in color, is the sepal. And the colorful one is known as the petal, the one which is pink in color here. And the yellow color in this diagram is the stamen or the endosium, the male reproductive structure. And the blue one, which in this diagram is the pistil or the gynosium. So these are the four major parts, or you can say the words, which are attached to a common base called thalamus. This is also known as pedicel. This can also be known as the pedicel. Now, in a flower, these uh, four basic parts or the four different parts involved in reproduction. So as I said, the, the pistil being the female reproductive structure will produce the female gamete and the stamen which will produce the male gamete. Apart from that, the petals and sepals also has uh, must be uh, some having some role to play uh, in the process of reproduction. So student, uh, I would like you to give me the answer. What role does the petal and sepal play for reproduction? You can. Uh, Write your answer in the comment and uh, let me check it and find it what answer you give me. So anyway, now uh, let us uh, discuss how this pistil and the stamen help in reproduction. Now we will see how uh, pistil and stamen help in reproduction. Let us see its structure. So uh, the stamen which is a bilobed structure and has a filament, right? A stamen, this is the diagram of a stamen. It, uh, it is a bilobed structure, means it is made up of two lobes which are attached together where the pollen grains are formed, right? So this part is known as the anther and the long stalk is known as the filament. So a typical stamen consists of an anther and a filament. Anther is bilobed in structure where the pollen grains are formed and upon the germination of this pollen grain on a stigma it will release the male gam. Now let us see the uh, gynosium or the pistil. A pistil consists of a receptive stigma, a receptive stigma style and a bulging part beneath which is known as the ovary. Right? A typical uh, flower or any flower, the pistil or the gynosium consists of the stigma, the style and ovary. So inside the ovary, there is an embryo cell. I mean there is an ovum inside an, inside an ovary. So inside the ovary, it contains the ovule and inside the ovule, the female gamete is formed, that is the egg. Then the green color, the darkened one is the egg. Apart from egg, the ovule also con con contains the other cell, cell structures uh, like the antipodal cells, two polar nuclei and two synergies. Right. So there are other structures which are also present inside a, inside an ovule along with the egg. So this is the structure of a typical uh, female gametophyte 
or the dilocium which is known as pistil containing the stigma, style and ovary. Now uh, during the production as, uh, as I have mentioned in the beginning that uh, when flower involves for the production means it's a sexual mode of reproduction where it involves uh, the production of the gamete as the male gamete produced in the uh, by the pollen grains after pollination on a receptive stigma and the female gametophyte consists of an ovary inside which the egg is produced. So for the fusion to occur, the fusion of the male and the female gamete, the pollen grain must be transferred or must land on the stigma. So this process is known as pollination, that is the landing or the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the filament. Right, so pollen grains are a powdery substance which are formed on an anther. You must have seen it while uh, plucking any flower, you must have seen some powdery yellowish substance uh, stick to your fingers. So those are nothing but the pollen grains. So the, this transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma is known as is known as pollination. So uh, the Pollen grains are well protected due to its hard covering. So these pollen grains when it will fall on a suitable stigma, it will start to germinate, right? And along the germination of the pollen grain, it will produce a pollen tube which will grow down towards the ovary. And along the growth of the pollen tube, it will release the male gamete, right? So the male gamete will be released along the growth of the pollen tube, it will move down it will move down and it will go and it will reach to the egg, right? So the yellow color which I am doing here, it will release the male gamete. Uh, the pollen will release the male gamete along the pollen tube and finally it will reach to the egg and it will fertilize it. So this process of fertilization of uh, the egg with the help of a male gamete is known as syngamy. Syngamy or fertilization, right? Syngamy, the fertilization of egg. Fertilization, fertilization of egg. Of egg, right? As uh, with the pollen tube, two male gametes are discharged. So one of the male gametes will fertilize the egg, the process called syngamy, number one. And the other male gamete will fertilize the pollen nuclei. So it will fertilize the pollen nuclei, which I am circled. I have circled with yellow here. Right? So as a result, three haploid cells will be fused. So it will result in the production of PEN, primary endosperm nucleus. Whereas this syngamy will result in the production of the syngamy, the fusion of one main gamete with the egg will result in the production of a zygote. So this zygote it will be the future plan and the primary, primary endosperm nucleus is the nourishing cell. It, will, it is a nourishing tissue. So this is going to nourish the growing zygote. Zygote will develop into an embryo. Right? And this embryo is your future plan. Right? So this is uh, what involves in sexual reproduction in a flowering plant. This is why it is considered to be sexual reproduction as there is the fusion of gamete. The gamete produced in an anther in the form of a pollen grain. So when a pollen grain lands on a stigma by the process of pollination, it will germinate and along the germination of the pollen tube, it will release two main gamete. Right? So one of the main gamete will fertilize the egg which is the actual fertilization, results in the formation of a diploid zygote. Zygote is diploid, means double number of chromosome is 2N, which process is called syngamy, and the embryo will further grow as a future plan. I mean, it will remain inside after, uh, I mean, germination of the seed, it will grow as our future plan, or it will become our future plan. On the other hand, the primary endosperm nucleus 
which is the result of triple fusion. Okay, so remember this phenomena. This phenomena is known as triple fusion. Triple fusion. Okay, so this triple fusion will form the primary endosperm nucleus. Right. So this primary endosperm nucleus is a nourishing tissue that will nourish the growing zygote or the embryo until it germinates or become independent. Right, so this is how I mean the fertilization or fusion of the gametes takes place. Now here, uh, what is the fate of fertilization? I mean, what happens after fertilization? And also you can see fertilization is twice: one with the egg, other with the polar nuclei. So this phenomena is known as double fertilization. So double fertilization is one of the unique characteristics of a flowering plants, double fertilization, right? So double fertilization is one of the unique characteristic of a flowering plant or of an angiospermic plant where fertilization occurs twice, one with the egg and the other with the two polar nuclei which is called triple division. So remember, this is why I wrote here number one, this is number one, syngeny, the first fertilization and number two, triple fusion, the second fertilization. So as fertilization occurs twice, it is known as double fertilization. One results in the formation of zygote, which will grow as an embryo. The other results in the formation of PEN, which is primary endosperm nucleus, which will nourish the growing embryo, right? So this is about fertilization in a flowering plant. Now what happens after fertilization? As here, uh, the fertilization will lead to the formation of zygote. So apart from that, what will happen to this structure? So as soon as fertilization happens, the other uh, parts of the flower including the uh, sepal and petals will be shed off or they will be deterred from the flower or uh, all the other parts including the stamen and also the style and the stigma will be deterred. Only the ovary will remain. So after fertilization what happens? Here, let me write. After fertilization, after fertilization, the ovary, ovary will become the fruit, and the ovule will become the seed. Right. So after fertilization, this entire ovary, which is pink in color in this diagram, this entire ovary will become the fruit and the ovule will become the seed. It means inside an ovary there can be two or more ovules. For example, there are one seeded fruit or multiple seeded fruit. Example, mango is the one seeded fruit, whereas jackfruit or even the orange, apple, they are multi seeded fruit. So accordingly, the ovary will become the fruit and the ovule will become the seed after fertilization. And we know that uh, the fruit, after we eat the seed, we throw it in the soil. And uh, when it gets the favorable condition like the soil, water and moisture, that is the air, then it will germinate into a new plant. So what will germinate from the seed? From the seed, the embryo will come up along with its cotyledon. Cotyledon means the seed leaf. The seed leaf will grow. One will become the shoot and the other one will become the root. So the seed, the seed has two parts. The seed has two parts. One is the reticle and the plumule. Right? So the reticle will become the root. It will become the root. Whereas the plumule will become the shoot. Right? So the radical will become the root, the plumule will become the seed. So these are the part of the seed, from the seed upon germination. Right? So uh, this is how reproduction happens in a flowering plant. So starting from, we have started with understanding the various worlds of a flower, then we have discussed how. The fertilization takes place or how the pollen grains are transferred from and the stigma. 
means the process of transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma is known as pollination. And this pollination can happen by many factors or there are various agents of pollination including the air, water and also animals. So it can be divided as biotic and abiotic factors that help in pollination. Right, because pollen grains must be transferred from the anther to the stigma. Right, after pollination what happens? The main gamete is discharged along the pollen tube. It reaches inside the ovary, it reaches to the ovule and fertilizes the egg and then the polar nuclei, which results in the formation of zygote. Zygote grows as an embryo and primary endosperm nucleus, which is the result of triple fusion, will nourish inside the seed or inside the ovule, the growing embryo. Right? So upon the germination of seed, uh, upon the germination of seed, the radical will give rise to the root which will grow under the ground whereas the plumule will give rise to the shoot which will grow upward and will become the stem, leaf, etc. So, uh, this is, apart from this, after fertilization as I mentioned, what happens? The ovary becomes the fruit and the ovule becomes the seed, right? So, that is about uh, this explanation. Uh, so, uh, one more thing I forgot, which I should have explained in the beginning, but anyway, as I remember now, so flower, as I mentioned here, in this diagram, you can see this flower contains both the male and female gamete. So, this flower is known as a bisexual flower. So, there are flowers which are bisexual as well as unisexual, uh, depending upon uh, whether they contain uh, one, I mean only the male reproductive structure there is the stem and order. There are examples like the flower of papaya. And the papaya is, uh, I mean papaya is a unisexual flower which will contain either the male stomach or the female pistil. But there are some examples like the hibiscus which contains both the androsium and the carosium. There is the stomach and the pistil together. So such flower are known as flower. But anyway, whether it's a unisexual or a bisexual flower, there must be pollination, means the pollen grain must land on the stigma, then fertilization can happen, right? So that is why there should be synchronization between the dehiscence or the release of pollen grain and the receptivity of the stigma. When pollen grains are ready and when it falls on the stigma, stigma also must be receptive to accept the pollen grain. So this, uh, you know, I mean the process must be synchronized, that is the dehiscence of the pollen grain and the receptivity of the stigma, right? So that is uh, about uh, today's explanation. So I hope my explanation will help you. So thank you so much. You can give your questions or doubts in the comment section. Uh, so definitely I shall try to uh, clear your doubts. So thank you so much for today. Hope to see you in my next video. Till then, take care and keep learning.